male in the Spanish world had to be a soldier. There is no choice. Nobody is civilian in the Spanish world. So 9,000 soldiers held 71% of the world for 419 years. So when we get all huffy-puffy in America how great we are, we often forget Spain's greatness. 85% of all the cash we use today went through Spanish hands and sailed within 10 miles of Fort McCansis. So you've got gold. Would it be sad if you lost a husband? It is and it isn't, and these are arranged marriages. Some of them are wonderful. These are good people. You have, you know, you have good memories. You have great kids. That's what's the best thing out of each marriage. Husbands in that day come, they go, and the average marriage is about 12 years. For older officers, would you remarry? You're gorgeous. You're sexy. You make lots of money. You're admired. There's only five officers in Florida. Only, only fools make mistakes twice. Ah, he'll be walking home, won't he? <laughs> the number of the women and number of the men here, four to one. So often they have businesses. Good business to own, darling. Cash. These boys are paid 133 pesos. Each peso today, or a Spanish coin, would be about $1,100. So what we do is drop a coin in place. That holds my place at the table to gamble, to eat and drink. If I'm an idiot, out I go and the money stays. So the Spanish women carry weapons. Would you shoot at them? Good girl, excellent. You had that Spanish spirit. The best part of a man is the calf. That is the most beautiful, sexy part of a man. And he's looking around. Your calves, yeah. Remember, that's why they wear stockings, guys. So what's a vulnerable place to hit him with a bullet? There's a lot of blood, a big bone, and a lot of cartilage down there. And it also drops him to the ground. He's lost status, hasn't he? So remember, most of our women, 4'10", to about 5'2". Most of the men, 5'6", or less. So the British outnumbered us as far as, but they were not the smallest army. The British were 5'5", five, five is the biggest British soldiers recorded in the Revolution. We're the biggest in America, 5'9". So I'd be a monster in the 18th century. I just keep dreaming of that 300 years ago. For young men who grow up, the four teeth is standard, but we often forget France had the greatest army in Europe at the time. Not big navy, but boy, they had over 275,000 soldiers. And because French blue, as they call it, was pretty simple, it's indigo. One nice thing is cotton was so expensive. Look at what we're all wearing, guys. A single yard of cotton was five years' salary for an officer's wife in gold. So if you have a dress shop, we have to steal it, bargain it, or take it from the British one way or the other. But notice what's missing from the uniform. Cotton liners. This is called a just decor. It's a French uniform. There's no collar, no lapels, 12 buttons, functional cuffs, fake pockets. Wait, wait a minute. It doesn't say made in China. No, it doesn't because it was made basically here in the United States. But what's missing, guys? Why don't you put cotton in a uniform? Remember, these are lead shot. If they're in your system more than an hour, you'll begin to die of toxic shock. If you are cottonized, as it's called, and the surgeon sees it, they won't even operate on it. Remember, bacteria is in cotton. There's no bacteria in, in wool, and it won't let you burn. So remember, the Spanish wear their hair for life, but they have to put it up under their hats when they're firing cannons, because there's just a shower of sparks. Our gunner lost his hair about two months ago out here, which is pretty cool, but God, it's an awful smell. He was having lunch, and we realized his ponytail burned off. So you have to be careful, but these are three to four pesos, seven dollars. So remember, this is what America chose for our uniforms. This is what Washington wore, guys, for 12 years. British red coat, French just decor. He liked the French uniforms. Very light. Remember, these are burned after two years. So you got the perfect color on, and what he's got is exactly what 80% of the boys served in, sandalita, sandals. There's no heel, because all they could figure to put a heel on was put nails at the bottom. And you can imagine when that wool begins to <clears throat> get that lovely scent that it does, and the boys are beginning to have blood in the stockings, meaning the nails are driving up into the bottom of their feet. How often would you have them bathed, ladies? <laughs> British requirement is Christmas, and the Spanish requirement is every six weeks or a holy day. So we take about six baths a year. Are you up for it? And remember, they're supposed to bathe in the river. And anybody going to get in there? We had a bunch of hammerhead sharks caught across the river last night. So <laughs> probably not going to be in the water much. So. And for the girls, remember in that day, how many teeth? Four for the boys. How many for the women? Six. Un diente. One tooth. Remember, it promises the husband the birth of one more child, preferably a boy. Because the Spanish run to women and triplets, girl triplets. So Spanish are always hoping for more teeth, but we'll take one. So come on in and take a peek around. If you haven't been upstairs, watch your hands, guys. Beautiful breeze. Remember, this is just four guys, a dog, and a cat. The British put 45 men in the same room for 17 years. So during the American Revolution, how'd that work out for them? Remember, they lost 66,900 British soldiers. 28,000 are still missing. I'm going to assume they didn't live through the war. 88,000 casualties. How many did the Americans lose? 24,000. At the end of the war, it was 7 to 1 kill ratio. So stop thinking we were hiding behind trees where, guys, we were the best soldiers outside of Europe.
Yeah, so, the Americans are threatening to kill the British, the Spanish come in and save them. Surprise, surprise, Europeans stick together, don't they? So. Oh, it's the natives that would help them. They weren't allowed to be armed on either side. No, but the so natives were still helping them to hide through the guerrilla warfare. So the Spanish helped Not by the, the end of the war. So the Spanish actually helped the British through. They were ordered to by the Treaty of Paris. Louis wants two claims. One, he'd like not to be bankrupt. Second of all, his grandson, who's the king of Spain, hasn't had his forces involved for five years. They're just smoking and drinking in Cuba. Could we use them for something? The women and children here, many of them have no assistance from the British Army, and they're not associated. They're kind of just painted with the same brush. Two articles, Article 7 and Article 12. One is that the women may maintain property. They can also stay if they wish. They do not have to be Catholic or Spanish. This is brilliant. This is the first time somebody's really thinking about what's happening to the civilians who got caught in the middle, especially the loyalists. Second, the British Army can stay or go at will. Where would you want to go if you're the British commander? There's only 185 of you left out of 4,000. Nassau in the Bahamas was created just 20 years earlier by the British, and so. But you want your property, you want a house, everything is brought back and forth. There are over 40 trips back and forth by the Spanish. And they are very kind about moving glass, personal furniture, animals, but also about half the women stay. 